Hello friends, Del Blue here. I'm going to be talking about blending colors in this session and I have a little list of some do's and don'ts in the next frame but I hope you'll enjoy this and stay with me. For this exercise in blending I'm going to be using a composition that I got from one of my very talented photography friends and I have several of those but this particular photograph just impressed me as being uh, perhaps a better painting than a photograph so I asked for permission to use it I do need to mention once again that if you're going to be using someone else's photograph or painting then you should by all means get permission to use it um, and it's perfectly acceptable to use your own photographs for your paintings in this particular composition um, I really liked the sort of sculptural effect of the petals on this magnolia and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the lighting aspect and the color of painting on white a little bit later in the video but for now let me say that I began the painting with acrylics I did not like the way the acrylics um, were going um, possibly because some of my acrylics were old and I think acrylics perhaps um, don't stand the test of time quite as well as oils for maybe some obvious reasons but anyway I decided that um, I would go ahead and complete the composition so that I could come back over it with my oil paint now the subject of this video is blending so I hope that you'll be able to gain some information about how I do what I've said previously in this video um, that blending is is a matter of keeping your brush clean it's a matter of deciding what colors you want to blend together how much you want them to blend and by all means when to stop blending my painting students have more difficulty with this I think than almost anything especially in the beginning stages of their their painting so what um, I hope you will see is that um, now I'm, I'm showing you at this point the photograph from which I'm going to be working and, um, and it is a beautiful photograph but um, I think I'm going to enjoy painting it. So, um, back to the aspect of blending color. Um, if you have any questions about what I'm doing or why I'm doing what I'm doing, uh, please feel free to comment below. And thank you for staying with me. And um, I'll be back. For this blending project I'm going to be using a number six round brush and a number 14 chisel or angle brush I'll later be using the number 22 filbert brush and all three of these happen to be made by Royal and Langnickel I'm also using the Mona Lisa brand of odorless mineral spirits though you'll hear me calling it turpentine from time to time but it isn't it's mineral spirits I also use a very inexpensive plastic pot scrubber in the bottom of my uh, my medium because it allows for me to do two things it allows for me to clean my brush as you see I'm doing here 
by rubbing the brush on the plastic scrubber and that's better than a metal scrubber of some kind because that will wear your brush out over time but it also allows for the dregs of the turpentine the paint to go down into the bottom so I have fresh paint uh, excuse me fresh turpentine at the top of my medium as I begin. As I begin to work on this particular petal, I'm working on the shadow areas and I'm putting the colors that I want to be most prominent in first and when I don't get them dark enough or light enough, then I go back and make that adjustment initially. And then I am applying the white or the very pale yellow at the bottom and then pulling it up into the color that I have just added. And I keep doing that until I get a satisfactory result. Note that you really um, you don't need to use or shouldn't use your titanium white right out of the tube uh, because it's it rarely ever occurs in real life that something is that pure and that white and in this case you'll see me throughout this video um, putting on the white but I'm doing that in order to pull other colors into it and create that sense of um, highlight and shadow. And notice that I'm wiping my brush a good bit. Once I get a color um, applied that's going to be blended if it's blending too much, I have to simply take the paint out of the paintbrush and then go back and smooth to the um, actual tone that I want to occur in that particular place. And you will also notice, as I'm going to be speaking about later in this video, about um, really the exaggeration of the color that is inherent in those shadows and highlights. It's important to apply the paint, especially when you're going to be blending, it's important to apply the paint separately and then go back with the brush and bring it together to the degree that you want them to blend. I also need to mention at this point that paying attention to the complementary colors is very important in whatever you're painting. Um, because you need to be intentional about using them. For example, red is opposite green on the color wheel. They are complements. And if you added equal parts of those two colors, you would have gray and basically mud. But if you wanted to tone a green down, you add just a touch of red and add red to it until you get the the tone or the value that you're looking for. And the same is true for um, blue is opposite orange, purple is opposite yellow, and just get to know your color wheel, basically.
Let me, excuse me, mention something at this point. Um, I am trying to incorporate um, several colors into this, although this magnolia is conceivably white, but the shadows and the highlights indicate the colors that are um, resident, actually, in everything. Um, there is really no such thing as colorless. Um, white reflects light and black absorbs it. That's why you don't want to wear too much black on a sunny summer day. But um, that's being the case. Um, the camera because of shadows and highlights will pick up colors that we don't always see with our naked eye. And the one thing I would advise in painting from a photograph is to take advantage of that. Um, I tell my, my painting students, you want to paint what you see. Uh, don't paint a flower, paint what you see paint the shapes of the colors that you see. And this is an excellent example of that where the camera picked up the, um, the yellow probably from uh, the sunlight uh, somewhere resident in that area. And then the areas that are in this case blue or blue-gray, those are the shadow areas. So in paying close attention to this photograph, um, I wanted to incorporate several other colors just because I know they're really there somewhere in this light. But also, uh, at the same time, I wanted to tr stay true to the shadow areas and the highlight areas. So I'm looking, them, looking at them as shapes rather than a highlight on a magnolia flower petal. So um, you'll note that there are some areas that are, well, that seem to be white, but this is actually has some gray in it. This certainly has gray in it. And then I'm improvising as I go along. So the other thing I wanted to mention at this juncture is that blending color is a, a touchy situation. First of all, you have to decide whether you want to blend your colors. And second, you want to decide how much to blend. And in a painting like this, I want my colors to blend together, but I want them to still maintain their own personalities. So when you're working with, with colors like this, um, and you put on your color, then depending on how much of it you want to blend into the next color, you want to pay close attention to the, the, the pressure that you put on the brush, the times that you need to wipe your brush before going back into the paint, and in some cases, um, like with oil paint, usually anyway, uh, you can go back with a clean brush and do some stroking to blend a little bit more if you want to blend. Um, using the paint that I use and the liquid, this painting has already started to dry. Um, the white paint that's not really mixed with anything except a little liquid is still a little bit um, wet and I haven't begun to paint this area over here so it's still in the acrylic stage but just wanted to interrupt the, the video and talk a little bit about color and shapes of color, shapes of highlights shapes of shadows, 
and so that you pay close attention, especially if you're working from a photograph and you have the ability to do that. If you look at this painting, I mean this photograph, you can see where these shadows and highlights are shaped and you can also see where they change color. But if you don't have this photograph, um, you can't see that. Um, and if you don't know to look for it, <laughs> actually, you're not going to see it. So um, take this as a lesson in seeing. And if you paint those shapes of colors, shapes of highlights, and shapes of shadows, you'll end up with a painting you'll be proud of. But if you look at the whole flower and say, oh, this is a white magnolia, um, and you start to try to paint it, just in terms of the sh actual shape of the flower, which is also important, but you've got to learn how to see. The same is true when you're painting outside shadows and highlights in foliage have shapes. If you try to paint leaves, individual leaves, um, well, for one thing, you'll just go nuts. <laughs> but pay attention the next time you go outside at the foliage on a tree and see that the colors change, the shapes of the shadows um, are irregular, and just pay attention, learn how to see. Well, I'm going back to work here, um, so welcome aboard, and I hope you'll stay with me to the end. Thanks.
tend to work all over my canvas. Um, part of the reason for that is to um, incorporate colors all around the canvas in one way or another, either a small amount or a larger amount. But it's also good in a painting when blending is necessary not to concentrate on one area for too long because you can over blend if you keep working at it. You can always go back if you need to with a clean brush and make those adjustments. But for harmony's sake, it's also good to work all around the painting uh, at one time. This portion is a good example about blending by bringing your colors together um, by applying, in this case, the white and then the gray down at the bottom and bringing them to match. And that's where the cleaning of the brush and the careful blending together of the two colors becomes important. And you'll notice I actually come back to this area uh, a couple of times to keep blending because I'm not satisfied with it. Uh, once my eyes leave a spot, then I can go back with fresh eyes and look at it once again. But this is an excellent example of blending two colors. I have some gray paint on my brush already so I can bring it up into the white uh, with confidence. The point here is do not over blend. Know when to blend and when to stop blending. learned science.
Hello friends, before I get started on this session for today, I thought I'd go over a few pointers about how to set up the palette and how to save your paint, how to use it on your second or third session. I keep mine in an airtight box and they make those for that particular purpose, but when I go back to work on it, the painting the second or third day, I can actually use the same paint. That's the beauty of oil painting over acrylics. Though you can save acrylics, but that's not my mission for today. So what I want to um, point out is that the warmer colors will stay vibrant for several days before they start to create a film, but not true for the cooler colors. Uh, in this case, originally, this was cobalt blue, Prussian blue, and I had some black and some Payne's gray. Black, um, over here I had my burnt sienna, and that will stay um, soft for quite a while. White usually will stay pretty soft, but on those paints that have developed a little skin, and that's true for this cadmium red light here. You just simply pull it back with your palette knife. And then if you want to go ahead and scoop it out, which is what I'm about to do. We don't want to mix it with the other colors just yet. But I'm going to um, put that right up here. and wipe off my palette knife like so. And in this case, when I get ready for some of that color today, if I need it, I can use what's there. Probably not gonna put out any more of that for this painting session. Okay, same is true for the yellow. Now it's got a little bit of a a skin on it, but you see I've really messed that up big time. I am going to be using yellow a good bit in today's session, so I'll be putting out some fresh. But my cadmium yellow light is still quite usable. Some of this white is still soft. I 
And because I had some yellow on my palette already, that's going to be an issue. But I can skirt around that. Another beautiful thing about oil paint is making corrections. Now this, I can actually pull the skin away and reclaim some of this. Um, And there's actually no hope for these. Now, when I was painting last night on this palette, I had enough because I wasn't using very much. I was making purple with alizarin crimson, which is right here, and the cobalt and the Prussian. So the little dab will do you in those cases. But I'm going to set up today with my palette so that in a few days, when I go to do some plein air painting, I will have my paint already set up. Okay, um, this is a little bit of alizarin crimson. Another color that I use a lot, but I won't be using it much today. Okay, and I do have some burnt sienna left. Now please understand what I say when I'm talking about these colors. For today's painting, I'm only going to need a touch of them. Okay, so let me put that away. Here is my cobalt blue. And I place these based on where they would be in the color wheel and I place the opposites or the complements across from them. Prussian and alizarin are my favorite colors. And when I'm using Viridian Green, which I don't think I'm going to be doing today, I actually like those three as a mixture for my dark colors. And that's what I'm gonna be working on today, my background. So I'm just gonna see what I can do with with these colors, I actually will need some more alizarin. I primarily, primarily use Liquitex and Grumbacher for my, um, my better grade of paints. And they're as good, for me that is, as anything. So. You'll find if you've been watching very many videos that this is all a matter of personal choice. I'll paint handy here. I can reach it. And always keep your pliers handy for opening tubes. If I was really efficient, I'd wipe off my tubes before I put the caps back on, but that doesn't happen very often. Okay, so I am ready to rock and roll. So, thanks for joining me, and um, let's just get started. Um, I'm going to be doing the background. I'm going to clean up some of these edges. I worked on this last evening, so some of the white is still wet 
but I do use liquid, which I've mentioned before. This not only helps to um, somewhat thin the paint, but it helps it dry faster and it gives a bit of a sheen. And for that reason, you somewhat have to watch where you're putting it because um, you'll have splotches here and there that are, that are brighter than others. So just use your own judgment. So I'm going to get started now. And as I've said before, use whatever brushes will allow you to make the strokes that you want to make. I'm going to begin by putting down some darks and I will do that by using Prussian, Alizarin Crimson, and I did not put my Viridian on here but I am going to do that because that will be a good transition color in here and so just um, stand by and I'll be about my business here in a moment. What I'm doing in this background is laying down these three dark colors, alizarin crimson, Prussian blue, and viridian green, so that when I bring in the cadmium yellow light and medium, I'll have various shades and tones of green leaves which are going to be making up my background. I realize that you're not going to be able to see what's going on very well until I've gotten to a point where the leaves are significantly brighter. So I'm going to be speeding this up a little bit more than I would like to until I get to the point where you actually can see what I'm doing. But this video is about uh, blending color and I am putting these three colors on in various patterns. I'm not just gobbing them on. I actually am paying attention to the shapes of these various colors. So I'll be back in a moment to talk about what I have done. This is just a momentary exaggeration of the highlights in the magnolia just so you can see what I'm doing in the background, but I'll be back to normal in a moment. Well, friends, I've been working now for about an hour and a half on this painting on the background to make it show up better. And I just realized I had failed to hit record. And I actually did a lot of blending that would have been um, helpful, uh, especially given the subject matter of this video. But um, 
the main thing that I did that was different from yesterday is um, I continued to highlight. I also um, refined some more areas, I made them a little more pronounced. Um, I've been paying attention to the shapes of the, the leaves that are more prominent and the um, actually the dark areas in the background. Um, and if you've ever looked at a scene like this behind something as beautiful as this flower, then uh, you realize there are a lot of shapes in here and the shapes all have different colors. When I came down here and worked a little bit on this area, um, I decided that I needed to carry some of this uh, into other parts. Now some of this does appear in the center area, but um, I touched a little bit here and here and here and here and a little here to kind of keep the harmony in the whole composition. And um, I've worked a little more on this center section. Um, I can still do some work over here, but um, not on camera. Um, but I need to highlight whenever this is dry. And you see, you can just pick, pick, pick on paintings that have details. And I don't want to pick it to death, as they say, but um, for the most part, I'm calling this finished. I will wait until it dries to put my signature over here. Or I might actually put it over here. But this is my exercise in blending colors and knowing when to blend and not blend and, and how to keep the paint um, from mixing more than we want it to mix and how to apply it, how to use the brush, how to keep the blush, brush clean and that's probably one of the most important things in blending is that you realize every time you touch another color and go back with your brush you're going to take that color with you and you have to make the decision as to whether you want to do that or not and there are actually two ways to blend you can blend by um, blending the colors together after you've applied them to the canvas or you can put them side by side and understand that the miraculous operation of your eye blends them right there in your eye as opposed to on the canvas. And a lot of the Impressionist painters use that method for blending color without brushing it together they put it side by side so that complementary colors uh, create energy, colors that are close on the color wheel create a, a smoothness, a peaceful blend of those colors. So learning color mixture, learning how to move the brush on the canvas, how to keep the brush clean or not you may want to continue that blend stroke after stroke. But what I wanted to show in this painting was the way to do that kind of blending. And uh, not a better place than on these this wonderful uh, petals of the flower and, and also using the concept of painting from a photograph and I do thank my friend for allowing me to use her composition and that's what appealed to me as soon as I saw the photograph on Facebook. Um, it just lends itself to a sort of sculptural process. So I hope that you've learned something 
from this, I'm going to um, make it a little closer for you. So you can see my background. One thing I would like for you to notice about my blending in the background is that I do accentuate some edges. I have not only used the green, but some of my leaves are blue and the shadow colors are Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, and viridian green. And I use those in various uh, shapes on top of the acrylic background. And then when I came in with my greens, those greens picked up the foreground colors. And that's the beauty of blending in the background. So please like, share, comment, and please subscribe to my channel. And um, I will be back with other painting demonstrations, and I hope to see you then. Bye for now.